Hey guys, the Trader Smith here. As we covered in our last video, we are still working on Old Red, our shop trailer. Um, as, as we talked about, we took it out to pick up some parts and it just needs some help and needs some maintenance to it. It's been sitting around for a while, hadn't used it recently. Uh, in the last video, we covered how to tighten the lug nuts, how to check your torque on those. So be sure to go back and watch that if you haven't done that yet. Today, the video we're gonna cover on this is are your wheel bearings loose? Well, what do you mean if your wheel bearings are loose? Well, I'm gonna show you a simple way that you can just go around, do some preventative maintenance and check from time to time the slack in your wheel bearings. Sometimes there's so much slack, they have to be replaced. Sometimes there's just some slack that needs a little adjustment. So before you head out for that next parts run or you head out on vacation, check this. This could keep you from uh, losing a hub assembly. If you'll do this simple step, it will keep this from happening. So we're gonna grab this wheel at the top, inside and outside, we're just gonna pull back and see if we can rock it. You should be able to feel just a slight movement um, if it's set correctly, but it shouldn't be a lot of movement. Now we're gonna move on to this back one. This is the one that I noticed. You'll be able to see it and probably hear it in this one. Can y'all see that wheel moving? Uh, in simple words, that's not good. Uh, for this one, this one's so loose for me, this is gonna be a bearing change. If you'll go back and see our videos that cover bearing pack and bearing change, it will cover how to do this. I am gonna show you in this video, just for example, how to take the slack up. If you've got just a little slack in there, it's a good time just to pop the cap off, make sure it's got grease in it, and just take the slack out of it. Um, as the bearings wear, they do get a little slack in them, just like if you put new bearings in after a bearing pack. Um, it's not a bad idea to check them, you know, 3,000 miles down the road, 6,000 miles, take the slack out so it doesn't do this. At some point, that's gonna come loose, it's gonna come off, um, it's, it's gonna cause you an axle failure. Uh, worst case scenario, it's gonna injure someone or cause some property damage. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, pull the cap off this. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the slack. So now that we have the treader jacked up so we get all the pressure off both of these tires, I've also got a jack stand. Never depend on the jack to hold it up. Always put a solid support. Um, with it, all the pressure off, you can really see how loose this wheel is. So like I said, we're not gonna get into that one because it's gonna be a full tear down which covers in the bearing pack and bearing change video. So go back and watch this. This one does have a little slack. So first thing we're gonna do is pop the grease cap off. And if you watch my videos, you know I don't worry about saving the grease cap because I do not reuse grease caps. So this is a good time to look in. There's grease in there. Grease looks pretty good. So we're just gonna do an adjustment. If you open it up, it's rusty or the grease is discolored, milky looking. Um, go back and watch our bearing pack video. You'll need to pack it at this time. So we're gonna remove the cotter key. We're not gonna reuse that either. So see how loose that is? It's got a little slack in it, it's just got some wear, so we're gonna take that slack out. So the first thing you're gonna do is grab a hold of the spindle nut. We're gonna rotate the tire counterclockwise, and we're gonna tighten this nut all the way down. Once it's all the way down, stop. We're gonna loosen it back off. We're gonna try to loosen it back off. Let all the pressure off. We're gonna go all the way back down again. We're gonna bottom it out. Then we're gonna loosen it off about a quarter turn. Then we're gonna replace the cotter key. The 
cotter key has two different links. Always put the longer cotter key to the outside. I don't like to bend both sides around. I like to leave a little bit of that tail and just trim it off. And then we can replace the dust cap. Again, we're gonna put a new dust cap in at the end of the video in the description, we'll put a link for the dust caps and the various sizes, depending on what size axle you've got. I'll also put a link in there for a tool. If you do this on a regular basis, it's easier to use uh, than the chisel. I'm gonna show you how to use the chisel method again, because that's the most common thing that people have, but I will put another link um, in there uh, with a dust cap in, uh, install tool, and that's also covered in our bearing pack video. So just slowly begin to walk it around. It's installed. Now, don't see any movement. I can feel just a minimal amount of slack in there, which is what the manufacturer recommends on that. So that didn't take about a few minutes to do that. Like I said, this is gonna take some more work, uh, but that right there will make your bearings last longer. That'll keep them from overheating and potentially keep you from losing a wheel and hub when you're headed out on that trip. Uh, so stay tuned for more videos. Remember to check the links at the end of the video on the tools we've used for this. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. If you have any comments, please share those with us. Uh, we'll be doing some more videos soon. Y'all have a good day.